Hey guys, so I'm going to show you the basics of using the camera. So first things first, if you select your camera, you can go to camera view by hitting control and number pad zero. That will take you to the camera view. If you do not have a number pad, you can press tilde and then select view camera. Tilde is the little swoopy key on your keyboard. Um, I'll put a little image of that on your screen so you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, tilde and view camera will view you to the camera. Now, if you want to have your camera sent to the view you're currently at, you can go up here and press view, and then you can do align view, align active camera to view. And what this will do is it'll bring the camera to where you're looking. You can also use the shortcut control, alt, and zero on the number pad, and that will bring your camera to where you're at. So now let's say you have two cameras in the scene. Say you want to get something from this angle, and then you can press shift A and add a second camera and say you want something from this angle. So to make the other camera your active camera, make sure you select it and let's hide this cube so we can see it. There we are. You can right click and hit set active camera or you can press control zero and it will make it the active camera. And you can always press zero on your numpad to toggle out or you can press tilde and then select a different view to toggle out of your camera view. So now let's re-enable the cube and bring the camera to our view by pressing control alt zero just like this. So now we have this camera and this camera and we can alternate between them by changing which one is the active camera and we can render it different views. So now what if we have our view but we did slightly off. Say we want to use the rule of thirds. And to see that we actually have composition guides on our camera. So if you go down here to your object data properties, composition guides will be located on viewport display. Hit this drop down and you can select thirds. And as you can see, we have these lines up here on the screen. You can sort of see them. You can see them better on your screen if you click this. But yeah, you can use whatever composition guides you like and you can see them appear and disappear. You can also use multiple at once. But yeah, say we wanted this to have rule of thirds. And so we want our camera to be aligned to where the cube is in this bottom third right here. So if we select our camera, we can hit G and we can grab it and move it around like this and position it that way. We'd also press the G and if we hit Z, that'll constrain it to the up and down axis on the Z. But if we press Z twice, it'll be the local Z axis and we can go forwards and backwards. That's really awesome. Now if we hit G and XX, we can rotate left or not rotate, but move left and right on our own axis. And then we can also do that with Y which is GYY, and that'll be up and down on the local axis. Those are really nice. I use those all the time. You can do the same with rotating as well. Rotate twice on the Z. We can roll, rotate XX. We can go up and down, rotate YY, left and right. And that's pretty awesome. So those are some basics. And now let's talk about focal length a little more. So typically on wider shots, you'll be using a lower focal length, something like 20, or you can even get down to 12 millimeters. This is for like uh, landscapes and things like that. Now, if you have a character you're going to be wanting and you're doing a close up shot, you want something higher, maybe even up to a 120 in some cases, but generally 80 is not. 80 is pretty good if you're getting a close up of somebody's face. It's a pretty good focal length size. But yeah, you can zoom in and out with that, which is pretty awesome. Now, the Shift X and Shift Y, that'll just move you to the right and left a little bit. It can help you animate some pan shots because you can press I right here and keyframe stuff and that will set a keyframe. Now, clip start and clip end. Clip start is basically where your camera starts seeing things. And so if you put an object too close to you, you won't see it. And clip end is how far away you'll see objects. So if we take our camera and rotate it slightly up like this, we can take our cube and move him way back here. And as we can see, eventually it disappeared. But if we go to our clip end, we can increase that and we can see farther now. Now, depending on your scene, you'll want to increase or decrease this. If it's an indoor scene, you can decrease it pretty, pretty extreme. But if it's an outdoor scene, you'll probably want to increase the clip end quite a bit. And now sometimes you'll keep increasing the clip end, but you still won't be able to see whatever your object is. And that is because if you go to your view settings, if I were to set my view to 50 uh, millimeters like this, I can only I can't see my cube anymore because that is my view and my viewport is too small. But if I were to set it back to something like a thousand, we can see it. So remember, view and your camera view distance are not the same. So keep that in mind. Now, you also have this depth of field setting. I won't go into it too much, but basically, because I have another video on it, if you want to see it, it's like two minutes long, but I'll just give you the basics right here. So 
depth of field. Let's select our camera again. If we check the box here and select our focus object right here, say we lower the f-stop, and then let's go to rendered preview. We can see it'll start to blur objects in the background. Let me turn off scene world and go back to our camera and let's lower the f-stop real quick. As you can see, the background gets really blurry. And if we duplicate this a bunch of times, we can see that happening just like that. And we can also make foreground blurry if we select our focus object to be in the background like this, the foreground gets a little bit blurry. And again, the lower the f-stop, the more blurry it'll be overall, and the higher the f-stop, the less blur. So those are the basics of using the camera. Um, I don't think there's anything else I really want to show you. Yeah, that's just how you move your camera along. Oh, and you can also hit lock camera to view, and you can move around the viewport just like normal, and the camera will follow you like this. I don't really use that very often, but it can be really useful if you're trying to get some uh, nice views. And then you can just uncheck it and your camera will stay there. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully that helps you learn how to use the camera and go get some nice renders. See you in the next one.